it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. We've spoken to you so many times, but to have you here at the Performance Center uh, face-to-face, this is really, really special. Thanks so much for the time and coming in this morning. Thanks for having uh, DDP invited me on and said I'd be a surprise guest, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be on. Yes. I, uh, it's called the gauntlet, right? The gaunt- DDP's gauntlet. I saw part of the gauntlet, I have to tell you. Okay. I'm from, I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Uh-huh. Cold stuff, cold weather. We pride ourselves on not, on not selling it. We can get a blizzard, three feet of snow, and we just go about our business. Old Wendy, you were. Oh, wow. Great no sale. <laughs> I thought maybe I was watching. I didn't see the lead up. I thought maybe it wasn't the, the cold plunge. No, it was the cold plunge. Was cold. <laughs> Out. Stand and you did like a no sell. Yeah, well, <laughs> listen, after that was impressive. After being in that cold water, no one's gonna call me the total package, but it was <laughs> it was it was crazy diving into that water. And to be honest with you, and, and I gotta give credit to my producer Paul, he did it as well. I mean, I uh I went outside. And it's it was it was kind of chilly out there and it was rainy. And I'm like, I don't even like standing out here in the cold with my clothes on, much less now jumping into 43 <laughs> degree water with just bathing shorts on. 43 but, degrees? 43. Yeah. Actually, it was 45. I'd warmed it up for 43 because your body goes in, you know, and I was in it for five minutes. That was it was, and- four, it was 43 degrees. OK, we're going to go. We're going to go with the 43 degrees, not 45. Okay, Thank you very 43. much. Although I bet uh, Dallas, I did notice he had his hands up in the edge of the tub and you were like, OK, now like keep on going. Like, <laughs> you tried to almost stay out from totally being immersed. Then you finally settled in. Yeah, I settled in and then it was time to get out. But thank you for watching that. It means a oh, lot. Great, and, man. and like seeing you. Like a man. Yep, I try. Stand up. But you know what is it's Dallas because he's in your ear and he did a great job of like talking to me, asking me about busted open, talking about the show. So you get a little bit of a distraction where you're not thinking about the cold. You're not thinking about the water. You're thinking about here's, you know, DDP asking me a question. So I'm focused on him. I'm focused on that. And that really helped the master of mastering the mind, right? Yeah. You know, while you're positively unstoppable. Yes. To try to be. But, but, but Lex, I mean, so much to talk about with you. First and foremost, yeah. let's go, let's get into Sunday. We spoke to you before Sunday. We spoke to you last week, yeah. Sunday and Sting's last match. What was that like being oh, there? Incredible atmosphere. When I first heard, I asked him a few days before, are you, are you guys going on last? He goes, I guess they debated that a little bit. And sometimes those pay-per-views, they do the warm-up show. Yeah. And sometimes the crowd can, it was hot in there. Yeah. My God, it was hot in there, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Sometimes you could lose the crowd a little bit, but man, that crowd was phenomenal. They stayed hot. They were lit for the match, which I was so excited. I, they got us out there so we could kind of soak in the atmosphere. It was off camera. Was so off good. camera. We, yeah, we, we yeah, can yeah. work on camera. You know, <laughs> WWE is classy. They said we can go and everything. Just don't, you know, be on camera interviewing or we'll be a part of the match. But it, it was, it was a, it was an incredible evening. How about, what that, what, how about that Darby Allen? Is he crazy or what? <laughs> I love him to death, but God, he's well, he's a different animal, bro. But now he's going to like, is he climb Mount Everest he's or something? He's going to cl- climb Mount Everest. Unbelievable. After doing that big spot, now he's going to take time off to climb Mount Everest. Like, that. what are you doing? Well, Stay you're, on TV. Okay. You're hot. You're what, Paige? She's kind of an adventurous, right? Oh yeah, she climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, yeah. Mount Fuji, and she was like, she was like his coach. But the main guy was this guy uh, we call him Vern. Um, and, uh, he was an Olympic uh, coach for uh, volleyball. He to do tours, freaking like a, a number of tours up on Everest. Take twenty people up there. So that's a guy. That's not, pl- that's not playing now. That's, no, that's dude, serious that's stuff. serious. Yeah, yeah. 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 So bottom line is I put Darby in touch with him and he gave him some, a lot of insights and then pages, you know, over the, you know, over the time. You so, encouraged him to do that? No, I didn't encourage him. Oh, okay. I was like, you're not you just connected. I just do a connector. I want to make sure that if he's going to go, he at least <laughs> get, gets the deal with people who've been there, you know, not uh-huh. just guests. 
but it's supposed God to gave like. you the gift of connecting people, Dallas. Yeah, you know that. Well, I mean, Sting, obviously his last match, Sting a Hall of Famer. I'm still, listen, you need to go into the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. I mean, you, for, I mean Ab- abso- absolutely. You're a Hall of Famer. It would be a great moment. For and sure. and I was watching, and I, I first started seeing you, and here I am, I live in New Jersey. On the New Jersey Network, I would watch Championship Wrestling from Florida, 1986 you're there i mean i actually downloaded a couple episodes uh from youtube that i watched on the plane ride over here uh today you know go back to that time 1986 championship wrestling from florida gordon Soley. i mean what 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 was that like initially breaking in yeah oh, i had some great mentors dallas does mentor so many guys and i try to do a little bit of that not on dallas's scale with young guys you got my guy jonathan over there today um, just getting started. You love to, Dallas, I know you love to see people succeed or come back from, from sure. things and overcome. Uh, um, I had Hiro Matsuda, who was a great mentor, and uh, he made it pretty seamless for me. Um, my gosh, they had me in the ring, and I wrestled Wahoo McDaniel for the, what at the time was the big title. Well, I think a couple months in, and they made me the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Yep. I, I didn't well, realize you look, how. You looked like the champion. I didn't realize how big that was, though. I mean that's that's a that was an incredible huge yeah huge, dude. so uh, it was great that would be your your independent circuit now kind of right yeah I guess it would be yeah. right yeah but uh, Flair came down and went back and told Dusty and Jimmy Crockett about me Flair came down the first time I wrestled our Broadway I saw Rick come in that building Daytona the Georgia Funner the limo and the, he had on the coat and the suit and the Louis Vuitton luggage and the Rolexes and the diamonds I go. Man, I want to be like him. And uh, Rick went back and put in a word for me, and uh, and they brought me in. I didn't even know who the four horsemen were. I went up there. You're going to be a four horseman? I go, yes. Yeah, what, what is that? <laughs> I was a. I was not a. I didn't grow up watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. I was a. I was a wrestler who wasn't a fan. Not now. I'm like. I told you guys I came over. Now I'm like a super fan. That's awesome. On the backside, so. I did it backwards, but it was a just an incredible opportunity that I look back now as just amazing. All the guys that helped me along the way, just absolutely incredible. Dusty then took over and he gave me the torture rack and the where I went out my first match and told, told me that you got to be the brains and the brawn and the look. He said we're gonna. He said like the total package. So Dusty like wow, so creative, right? Came up with all that like on the spur of the moment before I went out for my first match. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, and then you look at the moments and the career that you've had. Is there a favorite part of your career? Because you were everywhere. NWA, WCW, WWF. Like, was there a favorite part of your career? There's some favorite times, obviously, being with the Horsemen. That opportunity to work with Aaron and Tully and JJ and H and some of the great matches to be in the first war games with them. Yeah. It was an incredible moment in the Omni. Um, let me think. Moving along. Um that I had a huge match with Ric Flair and, and Baltimore. I think it was a, a huge moment uh, for the world title. Dusty actually wanted to, called in, wanted to almost change the finish when he saw the crowd response in Baltimore that first time I wrestled Nate for the belt. Was, he called in, can we maybe change the finish? Because the crowd was so hot. Yeah, they were. They loved match. you. Yeah. And uh, huge moment. Uh, the Lex Express was was as the lead-in slamming Yokozuna. Man, on, on what a setup, right? On the yeah, USS Intrepid, the background of the on July Fourth, yeah. that was incredible. And they, the you know, I I think moment. everybody listening would agree that you know they should have put the title on you. Like, what are you doing on that? It would have been nice. Yeah, you know, kind of cherry on top. But the actual the Intrepid the tour was a phenomenal. Yeah, um, a lot of people know a lot more about the business than I ever did or would. Kind of thought that maybe put the belt on him, and if you want. to, Put it back on Yoko. Put it back on him. Have you come through in that moment, at least? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Vince always, kind of scenes, never promised the title to me, contrary to popular belief. And he said that if we're going to do it, I want to do it at WrestleMania 10. I want it to be special. But things happen, and 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 Brett and I were the co-winners of the Rumble, and Brett got Brett was always an incredible champion, so they went that direction. But. Uh, I never had any hard feelings or thought I got cheated or it was a great experience. One of the highlights, the whole Lexus press thing. Um, 
and then the, obviously walking out in nitro in the big white shirt. Yep, that was that that was that a, was a, that was you, a big you knew there was a shift. Yeah. It was a shift that just happened. Could tell us you were you were supposed to be a TV that day, right? Right, I was supposed to be a WWE TV. I was up in Moncton for the house show uh, the night the day before the tag match against Shawn Michaels and Razor, I think. So yeah, and I, they kept it a secret. They flew me in, kept me away from everybody, kept me on the other side of the mall to right before I went out. So that that was that was quite a That's moment. That's pretty cool. That was definitely yeah, even the guys and they're like, you know, we, we kayfabe all the guys. The boys are like, what? What are you? They were like, you can work the guys. Yeah, they were. No, that's the best. I was, I was, I'm, I'm walking out. <laughs> so that that was phenomenal. And of course, uh, the hundredth Nitro was a big moment. Uh, we got left laying in the ring. You did too. Dallas and I were like the stalwarts for WCW. We got beat up, left laying, stuff thrown on us, tobacco juice. I would roll nachos. I would roll <laughs> under the <laughs> ropes. Like roll under the ropes. Oh, you were smarter than me. I was hit. stupid. I laid the ring. I got covered. I just had to wrestle a dark match afterwards. I'd go in. And I finally started just walking in my full wrestling gear, sh showering off and walking back out in my boots, squishing with water and wrestling a dark match afterwards, trying to leave the fans happy. But um, that 100th Nitro, uh, with Hogan picking me to do that match, they figured hey, we left him laying every night for a hundred, almost 100 episodes. That's, we got to give the fans something. So Yep. That he chose me in that moment. Um, the, that Detroit crowd that night was. They were white hot, boy. Oh, my gosh. They were white hot. That was boy. something else, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Amazing. That, that was a, a huge moment, and uh, that I'll always remember as well. And uh, so, yeah, that that that's some of the highlights. And the whole Monday Night War thing was oh, yeah. part of that. Well, Dallas and I were talking early on about right now, the present. It, you got to really go probably back to that time where wrestling is as hot as it is right yeah. now. I mean, it's it's been over two decades since we've seen wrestling this popular like it is in 2024. I'm not a historian, but I, I've told that wrestling's always been cyclical like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's time. Yeah. It's exploding. And you're and you're paying attention. I know you're a big oh, listener yeah. to Busted Open, which is an honor, and I truly appreciate I that. Mornings with you guys. Thank you so much. Years. Yeah. That means a lot. Uh -huh. Like, what is it about wrestling right now that's get that's got your attention and keeping your attention? I think it's uh, a lot of things. I think it's partly the competition between the two companies now. Reminds me a little bit of what WCW and WWE. I think it brings the best out of both companies. Mm -hmm. I think it's great for the, the the talent, the guys. I think that brings more out of them. I think better money for them, better matches. Uh, I I just think that it's, we've come back to that, and it's, I don't know if it'll ever be repeated some of those things never repeated exactly but i think that's a big part of it yeah uh with the competition or so many even great organizations besides aw and wwe out there too it's like uh yeah it's it's incredible it really is i think as, as being one of the boys it's one of the best times because there is so many and there's even guys out there who are making money and making a living working independents that weren't ever yeah. in the show that are guys are coming up and that's that's when I was really like, wow, which is yeah. phenomenal. And wrestling's on every night of the week. It know? really is. And then like go to A and E, and you're going to find rivals. And my my uh, A and E uh, biography is coming up. Not this weekend. I think Razors this weekend, but next weekend uh, they're doing mine. They want. Oh, I can't wait. Board. They do such a good job. On they really they do. Did a great job, oh, George. Man, gosh, I was. It, yeah. And I I, I think that it, they're not just looking at the wrestling; they're looking at everything, you know. And that 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 makes it a real biography, you know. Yeah. Emotional heartstrings, like you do with these guys, yeah. tugs at the emotional heartstrings, right? Yeah, yeah. And for you too, Lex. I mean, you know, you've gone through a lot. Your journey, you know, a lot of ups and downs in your journey. And you know, we talk a lot about addiction and talking yeah. about just the issues that go along with those. You were able to overcome that. What was one of the biggest reasons why? Well, well, for me personally, it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. I I got to the end of myself, and uh. Put him in the in, in control. So that for me, really, because I, I went to rehabs and they're good and twelve steps were good. I I, I was in a really bad dark place. So uh, when I ended up in jail last time and met a chaplain and he introduced me to Jesus on April twenty third of oh six, that was the big turnaround. That's when the light came on for me. Uh, and uh, also a lot of great friends. Uh, Dallas would come down shortly thereafter. I had the uh, spinal cord injury. 
could normally move my head head and shoulder. Dallas would come down to Shepherd Center, a world class rehab center. I spent two years there, and Dallas would come down work with me. And I big, said, Dallas, I'm like, I is he out of his mind? I go, all I can move is my head and shoulders. You, you know, Dallas, like, bro, bro, that's good, good. You're moving something. You're moving something. So, you know how he is. Look at the so, positives. You got to Steve would come to your house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and work there, and work there, and I, I, I through the years now have implemented it. Every morning before I go to bed, I do the bed version right. of the yoga. It's hard for me to get up and down the floor, um, and uh, I had taken a lot of falls. I'm to a lot of my friends. We've been talking about that, right. and my doctors were wanting me to be cautious and get back in the uh, wheelchair most of the time. Now I can stand for short periods of time, but. I haven't walked in a long time. We're gonna, we're gonna work, we're, on, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on that. See if I can get back walking again. That's am, that's awesome. amazing. That yeah. would that would be so awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I am too, bro. Yeah, Start, we're starting next week, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> we're starting next week. It looks like you're excited about oh, to start this. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Good for you. I mean, this is a it's it. I want that happy ending for you. That'd I mean, awesome, yeah. I mean, listen, and really these last few years has been happy for you where, where you're oh, yeah. saying when you're in a dark place and it's kind of the theme, unfortunately about the show today is like, you have to see that darkness. You have to hit rock bottom to be able to, there's only one place, but up after you hit rock yeah, bottom. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And believing in yourself you and yourself out of the way a little bit too. And I, and I feel and take, like and take the help that's out there. I, accepting the help but also not hating right, yourself yeah yeah and not hating yourself and loving yourself right absolutely and 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 i think you need to have that love in yourself to know that you can accomplish all these goals like nothing's impossible and like dallas always say you start with the positives like you being able to move your head well you're moving something that's, that's right. a positive so yeah, let's see where we can go from there pinky you know focus on what you can do what you can't not what you can't do that's you, right you know it's really crazy and 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 i'm a big god person big time and the day that this happened to him, we were in San Francisco. Yeah. And when I heard that, they the, the guy who ran the show thought he had a stroke or something. And I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. But it, since then, I knew he had found Christ and he'd really turned his life around. And like he he's not one of those guys that just talks the talk. He walks the talk. So I ran down to his room, saw him, and he was sitting in a chair by that time in the paramedics. You know, it, it got me up off the floor. Yeah. Right. But I didn't know. And he was like, he, at the time he was like, no, no hospitals, no hospitals. I'm like, Lex, you got to go. And he's like, you sure, Dolly, you really think so? I go, yeah, you got to go to the hospital, yeah. bro. And he goes, well, you know, you know the hips. I, and I said, I got you. Me and the paramedic picked him up, put him in a deal. And that's where we started our journey. And we, we've gone different places in Buffalo, but I've always oh, yeah. wanted to come back to this to try to do this. And I believe that he can do it because it starts here. And wouldn't it be amazing? Like what I, what I'm already visualizing and I'm sure he is too, is walking to the podium. Like that's like, that's God bumps right there, bro. Oh yeah. You know, like that's, uh -huh. that's, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the goal, you know, because it'd be awesome. You know, that, now that we have someone who is at the helm who really not only is telling great stories and being the, the head guy who's in charge of that, which is, you know, Triple H, Paul Levesque, he's one of us. Like, he oh, came no up. Doubt, yeah. We worked out at the power plant together. You know, when they put me in the Hall of Fame, he called me because he told, he's talking to the camera, like, this guy, what is he doing here? He's 36. You know, he's 22, you know, and <laughs> What's he thinking? It's, it's never going to happen. But then he saw the work ethic and the shit that really helped me with my character was stuff that Lex and Sting and Nash would say when people, just in the magazine things say, so in five words or less, what do you think of uh, whatever character? It was me that week, that month or whatever it was. Hard, hardest work I've ever seen. Won't give up. Relentless. Remember never what I got. told you initially though, my arrogant self back then? <laughs> I said, he asked me a question about what I think, and I said, I "Remember what I said?" I said, "Don't quit your day job." I didn't know what my job was. Yeah, the nightclub business. Right? But don't quit your day, don't quit your day job, Dallas. Oh of course, you proved me wrong. I did an interview, about, introduced him about two years later. I go, man. At one time, I told him, "Don't quit your day job." I introduced him as one of the biggest stars in, in WCW. So, what what a journey we've had together. 
We love you, my brother. I love you too, man. I would love to see that moment where you can be up in that podium and accepting an induction into the Hall of Fame. I really feel it should be this year. I mean, to me, you want a fast coat? You bet, boy. You better get. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm just saying, if there's anybody, it's it's unbelievable to me that you're not even in the Hall of Fame yet. What what you accomplished in the territory area and the and the NWA. WCW and the WWF. I mean, if there was one person that should be, have should have been in the Hall of Fame ten, you know, fifteen, 15. years ago, it's Lex <laughs> Luger. A lot of people think I ha I am already. So. I, you know what? I think probably most people do. Yeah. Probably, I, I, I bet if you all the time. Yeah, I bet if you mention the name Lex Luger, they they just assume right. that you're already in the Hall of Fame. If you were to go in the Hall of Fame, who would be the perfect person to induct you? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh wow, um, Stinger. Probably Sting would be the first yeah. thing that pops up if he could do it. And you inducted Sting into the TNA Hall did, of Fame. I did, yeah. Uh, which was a great moment. So well, that would uh, be fantastic yeah. if you were able to have your good friend Sting induct you into the Hall of Fame. I was hoping you would say Dave LaGreca because <laughs> you listen to me every single morning. <laughs> but you know what, though? I, You're signing live. Um, You'll be proud to you, David, if you do it. I'd be honored. I, I would accept being a guest at the Hall of Fame. But you can make sure <laughs> I would be there. So that 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 means a lot. Um, but thank you for everything that you've given thank to you, the David. pro wrestling business because you are a legend. And I know people use that term loosely, but it definitely defines your life, uh, your career, and then what you're doing now and how you're inspiring people now. So you are truly a legend and an Thank icon. You, Appreciate yeah. it. Man.